in continuation of the short series of videos that I've been doing discussing the tactical cutlass and its application as a modern weapon, I'm going to go over some basic principles of attack. Today's lesson is angles of attack. Every weapons-based martial art that I've come across so far in my studies incorporates some kind of delineated system of angles of attack. In tactical cutlass fencing, I make use of nine angles. This pattern was not my idea. The simple asterisk that you see here is used by most HEMA practitioners and is in fact included in the old cutlass and saber manuals that I like to read when I'm figuring out how to use this weapon. I apologize, as the chart may be a little bit difficult to read out here, but what I've done is traced basically an X on top of a plus sign with a big dot in the middle. Some systems use angles that correspond to specific parts of the human anatomy. The Filipino martial arts, for example. This is not like that. This is a sort of a free-floating crosshair that you put on your target, and the number attached to each of these angles describes where your sword comes from as it passes through that imaginary center of your target. What we're going to imagine here is that this is a sort of a, a floating crosshair, and you can put this anywhere you want. It can be right in your opponent's face, it can be in their chest, it could be on their leg, it could be on their arm. Wherever your gaze is focused and you intend to cut, that is where this star pattern is imaginarily resting. Now, the purpose of this is to get you to understand the different angles from which you can attack your opponent and to make you proficient in keeping good edge alignment and accuracy in your cuts so that you can cut efficiently from eight different directions. What are these directions? Angle one starts from your right shoulder and traces down to your left hip. Angle two is your high left down to your low right. Angle three is now from your low right up to your high left. Angle four is from your low left up to your high right. Angle five is from your right side over to your left horizontally. Six is back the opposite direction from left to right. Seven is from straight above. Eight is from straight below. That makes your basic asterisk. Now angle nine is actually just the center of the target. Angle nine is a thrust straight to the target. Now, these first eight angles that I just described are typically cutting attacks. I'm going to attack high one to his neck, left side of his neck. It's probably going to be a cut. However, it is quite possible to thrust along these outside angles here. So if I'm facing my opponent here, and I intend to stab him, I have two options. I can come straight in on angle 9, where I can choose one of those side angles that I just discussed, and come in with a hook thrust. The purpose of thrusting in at an angle instead of straight on would probably be to circumvent his defenses. If he's carrying a shield, for example, I'd want to thrust around it. If I'm in very close quarters, grappling with him essentially, I'm probably not going to have room for a straight on thrust, but I might be able to get in to the side and thrust up to his lower abdomen. I'm going to go over those angles one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9. Angle 1 is the most intuitive attack that you can make. It's, <laughs> it's what just about everybody does under stress. Angle 1 gives you the most power, and it's the easiest to keep your edge alignment. Because of that, you should start with angle 1. Once you get the hang of cutting from a pie over your right shoulder down to the left, then you can move on to the others. Angle 2 is the second easiest. It's a backhand cut. 3 and 4, they're a little bit trickier. Notice my hand here, it's not in the same grip, really. When my wrist is rotated down like this, it's a little awkward and I have to adjust my hold on the weapon. You have to learn to keep proper edge alignment when you cut from below. It's difficult. And your cuts from below are probably going to be weaker than your cuts from above. It's just a fact of life. Horizontal cuts are hard to keep level. Unless it's at eye level, it is kind of tricky to keep good edge alignment with these and to actually successfully shear through your target. Angle 7 from straight above is it's a good cut. It has probably the most reach. As you know, attacking high gives you more reach than attacking low. Now, angle 8 is a little bit tricky. I don't use this one much. In fact, I don't think I would ever cut along angle 8. Straight up from below, it's very awkward for your wrist, and quite frankly, it is much easier to cut slightly diagonally from either three or four. That's what most of your cuts are going to end up being. Most of them are diagonals along one, two, three, and four. Rarely are you going to actually get that horizontal in there and your straight verticals. Now, I keep angle eight on the chart, one, for symmetry purposes, and two, because a thrust along angle eight can be quite useful to penetrate somebody's defenses. A lot of people, unfortunately, make the mistake of only practicing their angles one and two. They put a bottle on a stand, they cut it with a sword, and that's it. You need to work on your underhands <clears throat> and your horizontals. Part of your basic swordsmanship training is going to be getting used to transitioning from one cut to another. So now that you've got this chart here, you know, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, in your pattern. Work on tracing those through the air and smoothly transitioning from one to another. The classic patterns would be an X form in the air for one and two, forehand and backhand. Once you get used to that cutting motion, start working on your three and four. And you can link all four of them together. One, two, three, four. Once you've got those down, start incorporating five and six. And finally, you've got seven, and if you choose, eight. I don't bother much with eight, as I said. Do the same thing with your thrusts. You can thrust high one, thrust two, thrust three, thrust four, six, inside and outside lines. Thank you very much for reminding me. So, <clears throat> I've got my sword here in the middle guard, more or less centered on my body. My body is divided in two along an invisible line with the sword. As I move the sword this way, the line shifts with it. You with me so far? All right, so this side of my sword is my inside line. Over here, on this side of my body, is my outside line. Notice that my chest, my abdomen, the front of my body is going to be the inside line. Why? Because I'm turned this way. My back, my shoulder, my sword arm, the outside of my legs is all on the outside line. Inside, outside. Now, on your opponent, it's going to be mirrored. Well, not mirrored, flipped. You know what I mean. So, over there, if I'm looking at you, that's going to be your inside line, presuming you're right-handed. And over here is going to be your outside line. The odd number angles are attacks to your opponent's inside line, presuming he's right-handed and that he's in a fencing stance. The even numbers go to the outside line. So I know that if somebody launches an attack over here to my outside line, I've got certain defenses that I'm going to need to put up. What I want you to do, pick up your sword, pick up your machete, pick up a stick, 
start tracing out those angles, memorizing which ones are which, and find different targets, be it water bottles, or tatami mats, or... If you're not too concerned with your sword, a wooden post. And just have at it. This is my center of focus. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Get some practice in. I hope I've been able to clearly communicate this concept. In case you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Please, by all means, go do your own research. Look at some old historical sources for swordplay, be them medieval stuff like the Italian and German schools of long swordsmanship, or be it something more recent like Alfred Hutton's Cold Steel, an effective treatise on the use of the saber. Find out what you can, practice it, and give me some hints. We're all learning here. Well, remember, whatever weapon you're using, these nine angles of attack can apply. Now, there are systems, like I said, that have different angles, but it's simple and it works. So, pick up whatever you got, start working on it. <laughs>